I wanted to write my friends a letter. One with all the trimmings and fixings. So that's what I did. And actually, it wasn't that hard, so I decided to make a video about it. First, I boiled some tea. I didn't drink it. In fact, I instead poured it on this paper. When the tea soaks into the paper, it'll make it look old like parchment. I also put instant coffee on paper where some of the water collected. This will continue to age the paper. It'll make it a lot darker than the tea, though, depending on how strong you've made your tea. After that, I started to dry off some of the sheets of paper. You have to be very careful with them because they're very, very thin and leathery and well, they're very watery by nature. I laid out some towels to sit them on so I wouldn't have tea stains on my counter. If you wanted to make them look really old and leathery, you can sprinkle some coffee on them. Uh, this is just a regular instant coffee. And then spray them with water. It'll soak into the parchment and make it look really, really spotty. It'll make it very dark, too. If you want to stop them from getting too dark, you can rinse some of this stuff off. Remember to be very fragile. You can't get them any wetter than they are now, but you can tear them, and if that happens, you'll cry. You can also just let them air dry if you like, but time is money, and I own a hair dryer, so I blasted them with hot air for a little bit. At first, I weighed them down with coins and just sprayed them at a distance, but later I turned up the heat on just one of them at a time, and that worked a lot better, a lot faster, too. Then came the actual letter part. I prepared an envelope in the same way I did all of the other things. I will say that if you use a stock post office envelope, the glue that normally sticks it shut when you lick it will soak off in the tea. So it may be better to use the envelope for a greeting card since they're also a little squatter and not as wide as a post office envelope. I'm using this awesome quill feather fountain pen that my wife got me for our anniversary. Uh, which is part of the reason I wanted to write such an ostentatious letter. Even if your paper or parchment is completely dry, a big, sharp metal pen like this can rip through it still, so be careful. Also, with any pen, you need to remember that ink takes time to dry. And with a pen like this, you can dribble ink or put too much ink onto an individual letter. All these reasons and more are why people use ballpoint pens today anyway. Next, I'm going to seal the letter part of it shut with wax. Uh, I fold it into fourths, and then I unbend the fourth fourth, and then bend that one in half. This means that it'll have a little bit in the middle of the fold, where I can drop wax onto directly. This is a letter to some of my friends who are in a DD and d group, so I'm actually using this metal D20 I have, and a birthday candle, in order to make a wax and a seal. You can use anything you have made of metal. Um, if you have a fancy coin, you can use that as well. But most wax seems to work decently well as long as you have a cold enough piece of metal touching it to seal it shut. The light of the flame makes this incredibly washed out, even more so than just writing did. But I am not touching the paper with the fire. When fire and paper touch, they usually are not very good friends. I'm holding the candle just above the paper so that I can try to ensure that the wax drips directly onto it. If I had a straight candle, it would probably be better. The curves of this nine probably make it a lot messier of a drip, as you'll maybe see later. But once I've dripped enough wax on there to get a good seal going, I press the D20 with the 20 side down right into the paper, right into the wax. The cold metal will cool the wax much quicker, which, if done correctly, means that the wax will not pull off of the sheet of paper when you pull whatever metal thing you used away. This is also why it's good to do something that's a little tall, because if you use just a flat coin, you'll sort of be scraping your fingernails against it, and you might mess up the wax. And you can see that successfully, I have imprinted the D20 into it. I should have let it cool a little more because I dribbled all over my desk. But other than that, this part of it went off without a hitch. Sealing this envelope went a lot messier. The interior of it has actually been waxed to prevent the contents of the envelope from getting rained on. I wanted to ensure a really good seal and didn't really have a way to stop the wax from spilling all over my desk. I guess you could probably use a ring or something in order to contain the wax, but I didn't think of that at this time. And again, the size of the envelope is preventing me from using it properly. All in all, it's a pretty ugly seal on the outside, but at the very least, I did finish my project and I did seal an envelope containing a letter also sealed with wax that I wrote with my super cool feather pen. And it all looks like parchment. So hopefully my friends will appreciate it.
even if they don't, I had fun. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I've been Alfred, and I hope you have a nice day.